From Washington, this is VOA News. Egypt moves ahead with transitional government. U.S. considers zero option for Afghanistan next year. I'm Ray Kugel reporting from Washington. Egyptian state-run media says the country's newly appointed interim prime minister, Hazem el Bidlawi plans to offer cabinet posts to the Muslim Brotherhood and the hardline Islamist Noor Party. Interim President Adli Mansour named Mr. El Biblawi, an economist and former finance minister, as interim prime minister Tuesday. Reformist leader and Nobel Peace Prize winner Mohamed El Barade was named interim vice president. The Brotherhood movement has already rejected formation of an interim government and continues to demand that ousted President Mohamed Morsi be reinstated. The U.S. State Department says it's been in touch with the Muslim Brotherhood and encouraging it to take part in the transition. A car bomb ripped through a Beirut stronghold, 11 in Shiite Hezbollah group on Tuesday, wounding at least 53 people. Paige Kalik reports the attack comes amid growing sectarian tensions in Lebanon, over the war in neighboring Syria. The explosion shattered windows and sent shards flying into the street. The blast left a crater more than two meters deep in a parking lot. Plumes of smoke blackened the sky and nearby cars smoldered. Lebanese Interior Minister Marwan Sharbel arrived on the scene shortly after the blast, but was forced to flee after a mob began throwing bottles and other objects at him. Security forces fired into the air to disperse the crowds. Page Collick for VOA News, Beirut. There's been no claim of responsibility for the attack, but residents blame Sunni militants backing the uprising against Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. Russia's UN ambassador says he's given the Secretary General 80 pages of documentation that shows Syrian rebels used chemical weapons in a northern town last March. Margaret Bashir has details. Russia's UN ambassador Vitaly Cherkin told reporters Russian experts had taken samples at the site in Khan al-Assal and tested them in a Russian laboratory certified by the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons. The results of the analysis clearly indicate that the ordnance used in Khan al-Assal was not industrially manufactured and was filled with sarin. The sarin technical specifications prove that it was not industrially manufactured either. Sarin is a potent nerve agent used in chemical weapons. Therefore, there is every reason to believe that it was the armed opposition fighters who used the chemical weapons in Khan al-Assal. Margaret Bashir, VOA News, the United Nations. Ambassador Churkin says he would send the information to his Western counterparts. The United States, Britain, and France say they have no evidence Syrian rebels have used chemical agents. President Obama is considering pulling all U.S. forces out of Afghanistan by the end of 2014. White House spokesman Jay Carney says the so-called zero option is one of several plans for post-war Afghanistan. But he said no decision is imminent. The New York Times newspaper reported Tuesday that President Obama is giving serious consideration to pulling all U.S. forces out because of frustration in dealing with Afghan President Hamid Karzai. Canadian investigators are looking at what role an earlier fire might have played in the derailment of an oil tanker train and deadly explosions in a small Quebec, Canada town last week. The fire, quickly doused, occurred after the train's engineer parked the train late Friday outside Lake Megantic and set its brakes. The chairman of the Montreal, Maine, and Atlantic Rail Line says... Firefighters also shut down the first locomotive's engines, releasing its brakes. The train started to roll downhill toward the lakeside town, derailing on a curve and setting off massive explosions. The death toll stands at 13, another 37 people still missing. 
U.S. Vice President Joe Biden says the 19 Arizona firefighters killed June 30th in a wildfire were men of uncommon valor who died trying to save a town. Vice President Biden led a delegation of federal and state leaders Tuesday at a memorial service in a packed 6,000-seat arena in Prescott Valley, Arizona. Thousands of firefighters and public safety personnel from across the country were in attendance. And former South African President Nelson Mandela remains in critical but stable condition. Mr. Mandela's grandson, Indaba Mandela, says the anti-apartheid leader remains, in his words, very much alive and responds when spoken to. I'm Ray Kugel, VOA News. Details on these and other stories at voanews.com.